But Mac was right, this is a bit chaotic. There's no organization to that assault, they're just wandering around shooting things. There's no sweep and clear mentality or tactic involved. We should be going building to building, taking out combatants, securing civilians, making sure the weapons are secure too. But I just wandered straight through the middle without anybody so much as looking twice at me. And we've been limping all the way here. Look at this guy, he's champion through this. An IDAP pickup. No weapons. You know, if you can make out that that's no weapons because it's kind of pixelated. Yeah, that guy is really trying to shoot me, but it, he's got some kind of script on him which is telling him he's not allowed to attack, right? An hour or two later, the government sent a truck to our camp. The soldiers searched the civilians for hidden weapons. But they didn't find any. No, and we'd already checked. It's vital our camps are weapon-free spaces, safe havens. Hmm. And Marcus, he must have made it through there. Yeah, just about. We talked a few times after. I don't know, he seemed different. I can imagine why. And what did he do after? Hard to tell, but like I said, he kept looking for his brother. Of course. And Marcus, his body, is still there in the churchyard? Yeah. To think he survived all that just to return to the same spot less than a year later. Nathan, you said that Alexis had been a recruit in the Altis Armed Forces. Yeah, that's right. So, his decision to leave the army, to join the guerrillas, do you know how that came about? It's funny, I asked Marcos the same thing once. He just looked at me and shrugged. Later on, I heard their father had been killed in the Civil War, but I don't know. Whatever his reasons, Marco seemed to have made peace with the fact he wouldn't change his brother's mind. Alright, looks like we've got a, a new memory. You know, Alexis' house, his workshop, it was like something from another time. I'm not quite sure I follow. Pounding of a hammer, back and forth of a wood saw, I don't know. Things felt simpler back then, is all. Far cry from what was to come. Interesting. Alright, so I think my target is going to now be... Um, I think I'm going to backtrack and hit that UXO there. Then probably do the one in this garden, then the one here, and have a look at what this new memory is. So I want to head out that way first. Alright, you. I remember testing you to see if standing on a shell would blow it up. It, it did, but there we go. You shall blow no more. And now we can just head on to the next bit of UXR. Alright, here we are. This one was difficult to spot, I thought it was like in the tree or something. Which would have made it a pain to disarm, but there we are. That's that one done. Next one's pretty close by. Just by this pile of rubbish here. Alright. And it's done. There we go. So the memory is in the next building over. Oh, is this it here? No, this is one that's not marked. Those earthquakes you mentioned, weren't there some fairly bad ones not so long ago? Uh, nothing too major. The worst came during NATO's invasion, actually. Solid fours and fives on the Richter scale. The soil out here is pretty loose, though. Folks were worried about gas lines getting damaged. Turns out they were right to be. And so chances are there were quite a few gas explosions then. Leaks and such. There's a fire extinguisher. And next to some cigarettes, ironically enough. Okay, so which one's the marked memory then? This lobster cage? How have things deteriorated so quickly? I mean, Altis is not exactly third world, yet food became scarce. It's a little things. A local delivery stops, trawler is damaged, farmland gets mined. It's an almost imperceptible but fragile network. So when war comes, things just fall apart. Okay, so they weren't lobster cages, they were just regular trapping cages for rabbits. Well, they did what they had to do to eat, I guess. 
Oh, there's a new memory down there now, too. Okay, well, we want to explore as many of these as possible. What's this one attached to? Oh, this uh, medical box. Our camp in the town, I still remember it clear as day. Were there many of you? From IDAP? No, not really. Four, maybe. Sometimes a couple more, depending on what we had going on. It was mainly logistics, but we did have a doctor and an ambulance. So, let's compare faces. Which one of these are we? Oh my god, your neck. What are you doing? Look back this way. Okay, so we are... Hmm. Are we either of these? I guess the closest is that one up there. But he looks a lot younger. Hmm. No, I'm, I'm gonna say no, we're neither of these people. What have we got to disarm next? We don't, there's another memory. Okay, I'm gonna keep looking at these as they pop up, I think. Just to make sure I don't miss anything. Like if they despawn when I take on another task. Just want some benches and a table. So Nathan, may I ask, when you first came to Oreo Castro, what were you doing there? IDAP asked me to give some talks on landmines. Talks? Who with? Anyone who'd listen, really. It was all about raising awareness. Hmm, okay. So raising awareness of the dangers and such? And were they building or planting over there? Planting, given that they, uh, they've got bags there, presumably for soil, like compost. It could also be bags of cement. I don't know, they're not marked, but... The stacks of bricks. What were they building? Oh, there's another memory out that way now. Really chaining these together. There's so much lore to uncover under here. And maybe that's why I'm coming across memories which aren't marked. It's like, um... It's giving me them in order, but I can just take them whenever I find them. Look at this one here. I remember there used to be a cafe here once. Local place. Actually, that's an understatement. I must have picked up more local curse words there than the entire rest of my time out here put together. Oh, it sounds like quite an institution. Did it shut down when the fighting started? Um, eventually. The guy who ran it, he uh, didn't have much love for the government. I remember he used to charge the local soldiers double, called it a tourist tax. And one night he was bundled off in the back of a truck. Never saw that guy again. And I imagine he never saw the light of day again. He would have gone into a blank site and died there, I'd have thought. So there's no memory just inside here, actually. Upstairs, maybe? Right here. Going back to what I said about the people here. Their support for the guerrillas? Sometimes it was a lot more than food and water. What, guns? Yeah. Even after the government troops arrived, garrisoned their mayor's house, folks were still doing all they could for the cause. Oh, so this guy is assumedly being shot in the stomach and he's dying out here. Broken into his fack. And what's he doing? Is he hacking? You know, brought up some command prompts. Scanning his file system to make you think that he's doing something. You know, give you something to look at while they look through your files, find your bank details. And he's gone. Leaving nothing but a compass and an empty box of cereal. Because that's what happens to people when they die. This cereal's gotta come from somewhere. Yeah, and we got another memory. Okay, well, on to this next one. But can I run up the front of the scoop? Can I vault up the front of the scoop? Without using mods? Oh, I can. Nice. Hey, how's it going? It's a knocked over water cooler. My understanding of NATO's actions, particularly against the guerrillas, it's patchy. Maybe you could help fill the gaps? Sure. Well, uh, aside from the odd direct engagement, it was mostly aerial support. Drone strikes. Of course, that all came from the airbase, the one on Stratus. I see. Not Altis. No. Even before they were forced to leave, their presence on the mainland didn't stack up to much. Come on, man, keep your back straight. 
Your feet there, no more than a boot width apart. Come on, they teach you this stuff in training. Oh, the next one's not too far away. It's right over here. This is where the guy was doing, um... Like, judo or whatever in the back garden. Uh, and now the whiteboard. Tell me more about Staff Sergeant Adams. You met him on a previous deployment. That must have been in Generous, right? No, actually, this was after I'd left the military. Previous deployment with IDAP, Pakistan. It must have been... God, 15 years ago? I think. Feels like another lifetime. Mm. Well, they've got the simulation over there, the one that you do at the start of East Wind. With the, uh, the goggles. That is a cool VR headset, though. Obviously, the eyes there, the sort of, like, the lenses are way too small. You wouldn't be able to see anything, but... I don't know, if my rift looked like that, I wouldn't complain. Especially if the headset was uh, light enough to not need the horrible strap that goes over the top of your head and stops you from wearing headphones. Oh, um... Yeah, it's all left a bit of a mess there. There's another memory really close by, like the same building. Assumedly upstairs. What have we got? Oh uh, yeah, right here. Those guys at the outpost. The ones murdered by the guerrillas. They never even got a shot off. How come? Not sure. I mean, it all happened at night. Big thunderstorm, heavy rain. But there are rumors. Some even claim the attackers were wearing army uniforms. I see. That would constitute a war crime, no? An act of perfidy? Yeah, but after the executions, in for a dime, in for a dollar. Oh, they've even got the power supply right. I mean, that's the power supply off of the, uh, the 360, right? But the console's modelled off the one. They've even got the weird grilled cooling on the side there, on the top. Yeah, that's like pretty much a direct rip. That's pretty cool. Uh, my next memory is a lot closer to where I need to be, so we're heading in the right direction. There's not that many more mines around here either. I imagine there's still plenty more in the uh, the church grounds there. Oh, so this was the school that I was in, in the last section. <laughs> Strange to think kids once played here. I assume the town was evacuated at some point. Oh yeah, early on. Many folk left as soon as the ceasefire started to fall apart. Others fled when all those leaflets came. Just a handful of people were here for the, uh, the end. Well, that's sad to think that it was a school, there's a playground out there. All these kids had to leave. Damn, well, moving on. This is another one where the IDAP camp was. Stand for drips. You know, when I joined IDAP, we were a pretty small outfit. And how many countries is IDAP active in today? Now, we're pretty widespread. 50 in the global south alone. CCB, DRR, you name it. We provide aid and development for more than 60 million each year. If you don't mind me saying, Nathan, you sound... I don't know exactly. Look, it's great we can help so many now, just... Back in the day, it wasn't so much politics, you know? Well, this is the first time we've managed to get inside this tent. Kind of expected more beds, if anything. Alright, we've got another memory, is it in here? Yeah, the ammo boxes and stuff right next to where the wrench finder was. The siege of the town? My notes suggest it lasted for two weeks. How could that be? Divine intervention. Pardon me? No. <laughs> Just the weather got in their way. Weeks of thick cloud cover blanketed the town. I'm still not sure I follow. It prevented the army from calling in cast. Soon as that cleared, though, well, you know about the cluster strike. Is that, um, Molden there? I think that's Molden. This guy's got some IDAP grin. Look at him. Oh. And I almost spawned inside something. Yeah, don't wander around inside those memories, I guess. 
Okay, next one's in this little shanty hut. I've been meaning to ask, after NATO pulled out, when CSAT stepped in, how did that affect your work? Day to day? I mean, coin ops stepped up, but honestly, things are already sliding that way, even with NATO at the helm. For the most part, CSAT were mindful of our activities. Brutal, no doubt, but at least clinical. The whole thing felt like one big PR exercise for them. Yeah, some anti-CSAT signs there. I do like the faces on these bloody barrels as well. It's brilliant. Alright, we might actually need to defuse a mine to get to this next one. Imagine that, doing our job instead of just wandering around chatting shit. Okay, there we are. So this is a mine, right? Yeah, the sensors are pointing straight at me. So can I get around? I can. NATO's been busy. Even managed to clear out a few mines. Oh, good for them. So is that an Epas? Or can I actually get in to defuse this one? I want to get a better look at it. Yeah, I can't see what it is, so let's just approach it carefully. Only go as close as we need to. Got it, there we go. So can I pick this one up since it's a mine and not UXR? I can't. Um, I'm guessing that's just full of toolkits, yep. Okay, well... Nothing on the mine detector, so we'll have to recount this memory. Ah, oh, some more IDAP correct. No, this one's rice. We've got IDAP rice. Nathan, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't IDAP and NATO share some common goals? The training, for example. The laws of armed conflict? Hmm, sorta. Of. It's a tough one, actually. It was important we didn't overstep the mark. You had to be impartial. Precisely. In a conflict, we have to remain neutral, a partner to all parties, even those that, personally, we may object to. Hmm, interesting. I don't get how the idea price kind of links to the set they've got going on here. Yeah, just everything apart from the rice is gone. Maybe that's just it though. Everything apart from the rice is gone. Now we need to get inside. Ooh, that is nasty. Right, well. I'm glad I didn't walk into that trying to get a closer look. But now we have our memory right here. You mentioned that IDAP worked with a local mechanic. How did that come about? Hollywood might call it serendipity, but I don't know, he just saved our ass one time, and then another, and so the story goes. There wasn't much special about his setup, but uh guy knew the difference between a crankshaft and a tire iron. He was good at what he did then. There wasn't much he couldn't fix. Never asked for a receipt, though, if you know what I mean. So either they were doing it off the book, or they were so pleased with the work he did that... They didn't feel the need to keep record of the transaction. Like they never wanted to go back and prove that they bought from him. I'm going to assume going off the book. Like maybe NATO engineers gave jobs to him instead that they couldn't do. And they didn't want to keep a record of the fact that... Oh, that's a nice picture to find up here. Yeah, didn't want to keep record of the fact that they were inferior to this random country town mechanic. And it seems like, yeah, that's the end of our little trip down memory lane. So let's head to the church. Oh, actually, there's one. No, I've seen that one. Let's not walk on the body bags, though. That'd be a bit rude. So this is the major. Oh, they've uh, dug these up, have they? Can I still not get in? What is that sound? Is it coming from this? Oh, it is. It's like the sounds of battle. 